In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Welcome to this Sunday Eucharist, as we continue to journey through Trinity season. We're very glad that you've joined us today. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. O Lord, who never failest to help and govern them whom thou dost bring up in thy steadfast fear and love, keep us, we beseech thee, under the protection of thy good providence, and make us to have a perpetual fear and love of thy holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. What then are we to say? Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means, how can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptised into Jesus Christ were baptised into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Jesus was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united with him in, the, in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is free from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him we know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin. Once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ. <laughs> chapter of the Gospel according to St Matthew, beginning at the 29th verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they've called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. And what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, 
Fear him who can destroy both body and soul in hell. And not two sparrows sold for a penny. Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is the second Sunday after Trinity today. An obvious thing to say, especially if you've been able to access the online notice sheet. But of course it is also a special day for a significant number of people here in the UK. It's Father's Day. I know it's not a festival or celebration in the church calendar, but it is very special to all those who are fortunate enough to be or to have fathers, grandfathers, or people who have chosen to take on a fatherly role in any relationship. So when I came to look at today's Gospel reading, I was discomforted to read the lines, for I have come to set a man against his father. To be fair, I also felt at odds with much else in this reading, but the father link did seem to jump out at me. Having just heard the whole passage, I wonder what jumped out at you. Although I have read and heard this many times, I still have to realign my thoughts each time I come to this passage. Jesus is the Prince of Peace who came to bring reconcil reconciliation, healing and justice. He said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. 
Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. And so much more. So what is happening here? Do not think that I have come to bring peace on the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own household. This passage is part of what is known as the Great Commission. And here Jesus has gathered his twelve disciples and is preparing them to go out in his name. He has just said to them, See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Now he gives them further warning of the problems they may encounter because they dare to speak of him and his ra radical gospel. And remember, these are men who have already left their jobs, families and everything they've ever known. So in his love for his friends, he has to use hard words to hammer home to them what they might expect. With that thought in mind, I read those words again. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. Jesus urges them to accept reality. Even the Father's gift of the Son, offering grace, mercy, peace and love. That great gift will bring frightening, powerful opposition. Jesus understands the ways of the world and knows they are not his ways. Here he explains that the sword of his presence and preaching in his name will cut through relationships and cause deep divisions even in the closeness of a family. And remember that a first century Jewish family was not a small nuclear family, but more like an ancient clan. A fundamental part of that family clan was allegiance to the father, who had all ultimate authority. So submitting to the authority of God and loving him before all others undermines the basis of the society in which the disciples live and will not be popular. It is likely to be the first place where they will meet resistance. One day, aged about six, one of our daughters said to me, I love you and daddy very much, but I love God even more. I was stunned and actually not in a completely positive way. Where had this come from? Well, actually, I think I know. As a child, she understood love and accepted love without question. So was open to God's love without questioning. It was a fact in her life and completely natural to her. I was in that moment again with her as I thought about this sermon. And I think that she has helped me understand that loving God first does not diminish my love for anyone else. Quite the opposite, in fact. Love comes from God. It's not a commodity to be shared out sparingly. God is love. And in accepting his love, it grows and is boundless. So there is always enough to lavish in all relationships. He is the wellspring that ensures there is love for all. In what seem such harsh words, Jesus gives warning that change in the accepted order will be challenged. The disciples need that warning. They have accepted Jesus and changed their lives because of love for him and the message he brings. It would be easy to assume that others, especially those that know them and trust them, will be happy to accept Jesus just as they have. 
Jesus has equipped them to cope with rejection and much worse. We are part of Jesus' commission to go and make disciples, to go and share the story of God's great love for us all. Are we equipped to cope with our part in the story of God's boundless, eternal love? We have heard words hard to hear and difficult to understand, but we have also heard Jesus say, do not fear, and so do not be afraid. He is with us as we accept his commission to go and tell his story. Let us pray. God of those who falter, give us grace in our uncertainty. Give us courage to persist in choosing you over and above all else to keep on risking vulnerable love, to keep on keeping and sharing the faith. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty God, who has promised to hear the prayers of those who ask in faith, Strengthen David, Nicholas, and Christopher, our bishops, and all thy church in the service of Christ, that we and all who confess thy name may be united in thy truth, live together in thy love, and show forth thy glory in the world. Bless and guide Elizabeth, our Queen, give wisdom to all in authority, and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace that we may honour one another and seek the common good. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbours, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit, especially those that we know. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of thy salvation. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ. According to thy promises, grant us with them a share in thy eternal kingdom. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Hugh, Nicholas, Paul, John, and all thy saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to thy unfailing love. All this we ask for the sake of Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, Draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, 
have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St Paul saith, this is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St John saith, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Amen. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that, his precious death, until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen.
O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. As our Saviour Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Grant, we beseech the Almighty God, that the words which we have heard this day with our outward ears may through thy grace be so grafted inwardly in our hearts that they may bring forth in us the fruit of good living to the honour and praise of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, good will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.